Andrew Carnegie says, put all of your eggs in one basket and make sure that no one kicks over the basket. How diversified do you think the owners of Quick Trip are? They're not, right? How diversified is Herb Keller who started Southwest Airlines? He's not. How diversified was Boone Pickens? Not, right? Why? Because they're sold out to their thing. How diversified is Oprah? Not. Now her products are diversifying. Anybody watch Oprah? You like Oprah? Anybody here dig Oprah? I'm down with Oprah. I love Oprah. Love it. Okay. She's got her own whole multimedia empire, but she put every dime she made back into herself, right? So if you own a business here, um, sir, what kind of business did you want to start? A bar. A bar? Okay. So you have a bar. And let's say the first month you make $1,000 of profit after you're paying yourself, right? If you go out and buy mutual funds, buy a little bit of Coke, a little bit of Boeing, a little bit of these different companies, and you diversify in the market, you're saying that you think those companies can outperform you. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe it. I've been able to grow our company at about a 30 or 40 percent growth rate every year. I believe that the market won't do a 30, 40 percent every year. So I feel like I'm a better investment than the market, right? But then as you get to your company to a certain point, maybe you reevaluate. I don't know. But I'm getting at it is you want to put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know what? You're not diversifying. And yeah, worst case scenario, you get hit by a bus and you die. But it doesn't matter. Okay? So I'm just saying put all your eggs in one basket because if you don't, you're never going get, to get anywhere big. Okay? I'm not telling you guys like financial tips for working for someone else. Sometimes if you start a business and you're an entrepreneur, you cannot diversify because you will seriously wonder why you're doing that when you need the cash to buy the new sign that says, Incredible bar. You call it like even more Eskimo Joes. Like you're competing with them. <laughs> you know? It's right across the street. You know, the crunktastic Eskimo Joes, you know? <laughs> Whatever. If you're gonna, you know, you need to buy that sign, but you didn't because you went out and bought mutual funds to diversify to protect yourself. And by protecting yourself, you guaranteed yourself mediocrity. Hamada hamada. Marinate. Okay. Moving along. Um, next point it says Abraham Lincoln says that you must practically educate your uh, you must practically educate yourself regardless of your accessibility to formal education. Does that make sense? Uh, let's go with pop quiz. Did Bill Gates graduate from college? Did let's go with here we go, here we go. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, video, and and light, light, video, and audio. Anyone here? You know, he invented all that. Did he graduate from college? No. Did Jobs graduate from college? Steve Jobs. Yeah. Did, uh, let's go with, um, we can keep going. Henry Ford? No. Um, we could go with, okay, we keep going. And it doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with college. It just means that you don't need college necessarily to do what you want. So what I'm getting at is you guys could start a major business in this classroom today. The idea could happen to you today. It could happen right now. It could be the next big thing. And here, it doesn't require a degree. Now, a formal education is great because there's all sorts of research that shows you will be better off than people entering the workforce without it. But do you get the difference between practical educa education and non-practical? Not to offend any teachers, but let's be real. Mesopotamia, do you care? I mean, I care a lot about papyrus and whatnot. I mean, I'm really into cunia form and I like to use it a lot. It's just the way I like to communicate, you know? But no one cares, right? You don't care, do you care? Does anyone here really care about the Byzantine Empire? You're really passionate about it? I mean, maybe you do. If you do, I'm sorry, okay. but. <laughs> But Pythagoras doesn't really involve DJ connection very much. You know, I'm not like, here's the deal. We have five different packages. And if you take A squared plus B squared, you're going to get, like, the big package. <laughs> Check with me here. Now, we got papyrus. I'm going to roll it out. I'll make your contract here. I'm going to use my cuneiform to make it. You know, no. I'm like, like, oh, the Incans, they used to do yada, yada. You know, the Aztecs used to. No. I don't say, you know, in MLA format, let me fax that to you. No, I don't. Right? Uh, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. But it matters for college because you have to have structure and learn how to do things properly and it's important to learn that. But what I'm getting at is what would be, well the last class we had, we talked about how to optimize your website, right? In 30 minutes or so? Do you know how to do it? You feel pretty confident? You feel pretty confident you know how to optimize a website now? Yeah. Okay. We talked about how to optimize a website, okay? Like in a 30 minute class, I wish I could rabbit trail there. But you can, can teach you how to optimize a website in 30 minutes. But how many people here know how to build a website but you don't know how to optimize it? Come on. Hands up. Who knows how to do it? Who can build a website, but you can't get it to come up top in Google? So you could build a website for real estate, right? But you couldn't get it to be, like if you type in Stillwater Houses, it couldn't be top. No, you don't. Um, real quick, do we, can, I, can I use this? Sorry. 
I just wanted to argue with you, but you're, you're sweet, and your name is Casey, and I apologize for calling you Miss Redhead, but I'm going to argue with you. It's okay. I'm glad you argued, though, because it's important that we argue. Okay. Okay.